Hello and welcome to this Halloween Arkham Insignia 2013 demonstration. Today we're going to be having a little bit of fun creating this piece. I'm not going to be doing any machining, I'm just going to be creating some models which I'm going to assemble as a whole piece to create this spooky scene. So if I just rotate this around so you can see this a little, you can see what I'm going to be showing you how to produce. Right, the first thing that I'm going to do is to open up this folder and within this folder I have an image which is just a JPEG image. And there you can see it's just a basic haunted house image. And what I'm going to do is to just grab that and drag it into Arkham Insignia. I'm not going to save the changes. And there you can see that it's opened up the image. Now if I wanted to assign a height to this image, so basically create a relief or a 3D object of this, I could enter a height in Z. I don't want to do that so I'm going to enter naught. I'm going to press OK. Now if I go to the 3D view of this and select to display the bitmap it will show the image within the 3D view. Now what I can do with this is select colours and basically assign shapes to that colour or create surfaces or reliefs to that particular colour. Now what I would normally do would be to reduce the colours at the bottom here because I have 256 colours right down the bottom here within the colour palette so I've got lots of different whites, yellows and blacks and greys in there even though it just looks like it's white, black and yellow. So what I would do would be to bring that down so it's just black, yellow and white so it's three colours and basically Artcam would use that colour to create a shape with. Now because I want this to look quite rough and because it's a haunted house I don't want it to look smooth what I'm going to do is just use the default black colour that's on here and it would give me quite a nice effect. So I can either do that by just double clicking on the black or I could select here for the shape editor and then just make sure that I've got the black as the primary colour and it's also showing the black within the shape editor. Now the shape editor is the basic go-to tool to create shapes or to create reliefs within Artcam. What you can do with this, you can create dome shapes, beveled edges or you can create flat reliefs. You can also set angles for these so if you wanted to change the angle of the bevel you can, the angle of the dome you could also do that. You can also add a start height. Now what this allows you to do is to add a flat before the dome or the bevel actually starts. And I'm not going to go into all of the dialog box for this demonstration but I'm going to show you what most of it does. And what I'm going to do is to select here for limit to height and what I'm going to do is create a beveled edge and I'm going to add a start height of 4mm and I'm going to limit it to a height of 1mm. So what this is actually going to do is going to give me 4mm flat and then it's going to give me a 1mm chamfer around the edge of this piece and the overall height is going to be 5mm. And then when I'm happy with the settings, if I select add, this will just create the relief for me. So here you can see it's created this relief for me. If I just go back to the material, you can see what it's done, it's created a flat of 4mm and then created a 1mm chamfer. Now you'll notice all of these bits that look as though it's being gouged in. Now that's because I'm just using the default 
black color and I've not reduced the colors. If I were to reduce the colors so they were all black, for instance, this would give me a much sharper and crisper edge. But I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look as though it's a little bit battered to be completely honest. So what I'm going to do now is to close the shape editor and I want to fade this down. So I want it to be the right size at the top here but at the bottom I want this to be a lot lower because I want to place things eventually at the end in front of this house. So the way that I can do that is if I create just a rectangle on the outside of this and I'm going to use a tool called the Fade Relief tool. This basically tapers the relief down. So let's set a strength at around about 50 and I'm just going to zoom in on this as you can see it's quite close to the edge of the model. So I'm going to select this first point then zoom out and back in again. You'll notice that I can zoom out and then back in where the mouse pointer is. So it's quite a useful, really small tool, but very useful. And I'm going to click select and select my second point. And then if I just zoom out, I'll just rotate this around so you can see this. And I'm going to select my rectangle as the boundary and I'm going to click create. So there you can see it's dropped the height of that down on the one end by 50%. I'm going to do it a bit smaller so let's press that again and maybe do it once more. So there you can see it's dropped that down. Let's just delete the vector, rotate this around a little so you can see. So there you can see it's the original height at the one end and then it's dropped down almost to nothing at the bottom. Now what I can do with this is add the windows or add the door to this. So let's turn on the colour shading again or the bitmap and I'm going to click on the yellow colour and this time I'm going to create a flat. So I'll just enter a start height for this so that's basically the height of this. And if I select add, that will add a flat to this. So if I go back to the material, I can turn off my zero plane so that it just leaves the house. And there you can see that I've just got my house. So what I'm going to do with this is to save this now. But I'm not going to save this by going to file and then save as or save. What I'm going to do is use the relieve clip art library. Now the reason that I'm doing this is because we don't have relief layers within ArtCam Insignia. It's only available in ArtCam Pro or ArtCam Jewelsmith. So what I'm going to do is basically use the relief clip art library sort of as layers. So what I'm going to do is use it as a repository that I can put relief layers into and then I can bring them back in later and assemble my project. So if I open up the Relief Clip Art Library, here you can see I'm in my Halloween 2013 folder. And here are some of the models that I'm going to be using a little later. Most of these are already included within the Relief Clip Art Library or they were free giveaways, I think, last year. And if I just take a look at the Relief Clip Art Library, you can see we've got lots and lots of folders here and there are well over 500 pieces of reliefs or clip art that you can use within your models. And the great thing about ArtCam Insignia is that you can use multiple pieces of clip art and you can arrange them together and then paste them down at the end. So you can create a completely unique piece. And I'll show you how you can do that at the end. So there you can see animals for instance, we have crests, so we have lots of reliefs within there. Let's take a look for instance at greenery. You can see lots within there. Now you'll notice that for instance Greek user group, that's my own personal folder. So you can just add your own folders to these and just place reliefs in there. 
So what I'm going to do is come down to the Halloween 2013 folder that I created and I've placed a few of these models in here that I'm going to be using. And it's very easy to save this relief into this folder. All that I need to do is grab the relief and just drag it and drop it into the folder. And it will create an icon or a thumbnail for this and it will call it relief. Now I can just right click and rename that and call it haunted house. Now if I wanted to let's say for instance send this relief to one of my friends for instance I can just right click on that and select locate file and it will basically open up a Windows Explorer folder for me and it will locate that file and then I can just email that so for instance if I wanted to send it to one of my friends I can just do that there so let's just close that and I'm going to open a new model so let's open this model that I have here called pumpkin.art and select open I'm not going to save the changes I don't need to because that's saved within the relief clip art library now the reason that I've just opened this this file is because I didn't want to create these vectors it would be incredibly boring for the demonstration so I've just got these vectors already pre-generated right so a more advanced method of creating reliefs within ArtCam Insignia is what we call the two rail sweep tool so this can get quite advanced if you want it to be and basically what this will do it will have a cross section and it will sweep it between two lines or two vectors so what I'm going to do is select that as the top drive rail that as the bottom drive rail so these are both the vectors that the cross section is going to be swept along and I'm going to select this wiggly vector here as a cross section and this is basically just going to be stretched and swept along these two rails now you can add as many cross sections as you wish so you can have them morphing into one another you can also change the Z control vector so if you want it to go in the Z direction you want it to modulate in Z you can also do that by adding another vector so you can get some really really cool and really advanced shapes using this so what I'm showing you is just basic to be completely honest with you so I'm going to click calculate and then I can close the two rail sweep and I'm just going to switch to the 3D view now you'll notice this blue box here this is just the material so I'm going to just toggle that off and here you can see this cross section which has been extruded between the two vectors to create this effect and this is going to be the ridges on my pumpkin now if I rotate that round because this is going to be the ridges you can see that this is going in the wrong direction you can see that it's a male relief rather than the female relief which is what I need now this is incredibly easy to sort out within Artcam Insignia. What you can do is to use the invert relief in Z only. So if I select that, it will just mirror this in Z. So there you can see, just the click of the button, it's created a female piece for me. And this is going to be the detail within my pumpkin. Now, what I really need to do is to add a bit of perspective onto this I need to really add a dome underneath this pumpkin so the way that I can do that is let's just go to the 2d view so you can see this what I'm going to do is just select both of these vectors and I'm going to join the vectors with a curve so that will join the top with a curve and then I'm going to close the vector with a curve so that will close the vector at the bottom with a curve and create a whole shape for me. So if I double click on the vector, that will open up the shape editor for me. 
and you'll notice that there's no color here now because I'm not using colors I'm using vectors so it's just got this line here and what I'm going to do is change the angle of this to let's say 30 and I'm going to select add what this will basically do it will create a dome underneath the detail that I've just created and it will make it more pronounced and look like quite a realistic pumpkin hopefully so if I close the shape editor go to the 3d view rotate that around you can see that it's added this dome underneath the detail that I created earlier so because I added that it's just added the material onto that right so let's take a plan view and turn on the zero plane what I'm going to do now is just quickly by freehand draw a stalk at the top so I'm going to draw smooth polylines and then let's have that coming round there let's say like so and then just drawing that up so let's just rotate this around because I want to show you something with the shape editor so if I double click on this now I'm going to create a dome at 45 degrees and I'm going to add this now you'll see straight away that there's a problem with this if I just turn off the vectors you can see here that's basically what it's done it's added the material onto the underlying relief and I don't really want that because it just looks a mess to be completely honest with you so what I need to do is figure out a way that I can blend this into the existing relief and I can do that by just using a different option instead of using add I can do that by using merge high and that will just blend the two heights into each other so that looks a lot better now we have subtract and merge low they will just do the opposite to the add and the merge high next I'm going to show you zero and zero rest so let's just close this for a moment I'm going to take a plan view of that and what I'm going to do is create the face for my pumpkin now I'm not very good at doing faces for pumpkins so please bear with me so I'm going to create a polyline and let's just create a couple of triangles here like so and let's create a mouth now I did warn you that I'm not the best at doing this I always leave this to my wife to do rather than me because she's a lot better at doing pumpkin faces okay so not amazing but it does look realistic it does look as though I've actually carved that out so what I'm going to do is select all of that and I'm going to open up the shape editor and I mentioned earlier about zero and zero rest these both act as basically cutting tools or trimming tools so if I wanted to let's say get rid of all of the material on the outside select zero rest it will leave whatever's inside the vectors if I undo that select zero then it will delete anything that's inside the vectors so that's exactly what I want so I'm going to delete all of the vectors turn off my zero plane and you can see my pumpkin so this is finished now so open up the relief clip art library and I'm going to send that relief to the relief clip art library and rename that to pumpkin what I can do now is to reset that turn the zero plane back on and I'm going to create some gravestones now I'm just going to do this from scratch and I'm going to create three individual gravestones here so let's create a rectangle first of all and let's do this at a width of 125 and a height of 150 and select create now what I'm going to do is to go into node editing so if I select that and I'm going to right click on the top line here and I'm going to convert the span to an arc 
So if I select that, you can see it converts that to this arc. And I'm just going to center that in the model. Now you'll notice these points here. These are what we call midpoints. And what I can do is just grab one of those and it turns it into a node. Now a node is just a point on the vector. So here you can see it's turned that to a node. I can right click on that, select smooth node to make it a curve. You could just do that with the shortcut which is S. Let's just move a few of these. I don't want it to look as though it's just a rectangle to be completely honest. So let's insert a few points here. I just don't want it to look completely concentric and uniform. Okay, so that will do. So there you can see the basis for my gravestone. And what I'm going to do with this is to use the shape editor on this. I'm going to do a beveled edge again. 5mm start height, limit to it to a height of 2mm and add that. So this is going to give me an overall height of 7mm with a 2mm chamfer around the edge. So I can now close that. If I rotate that around, you can see that it creates this flat edge and then the chamfer around the edge. Now what I'm going to do is to make this look a little bit more realistic. And I can do that by adding a texture to this. So what I'm going to do is select here for texture relief. And this is going to add a texture onto the whole of this. Now this is just a texture generator tool. You can do this over the whole relief, selected vector or a selected color. Now I'm going to do this over the selected vector, so it does it within the vector that I've got selected. You can do, you can use the pre-generated texture, so we've got spherical, elliptical, cones, pyramids or weaves. If I were to change the size of this, let's say 10 millimeters and add that, you can see that it's created a polka dots gravestone, which is not ideal really. So what I'm going to do is undo that and really cool thing that you can do is do this from file so basically you can do this from a file or an image specifically so if I just take a look for my folder you can see I've got this concrete um, JPEG here or asphalt and I'm going to select that you can see it gives me this preview here in blue now that looks way too big so let's change it to about 50 and I'm going to change the Z height to 1 and then I'm going to select add and you can see that that adds the texture from that file onto my gravestone. Now it may look a little bit coarse at the moment I want to smooth that down so let's go to smooth relief and what this does it creates a smoothing pass over the whole of the relief and I'm going to do this within a selected vector and let's just do one smoothing pass so you can see this so there you can see it's smoothed all of that texture out let's do it maybe a few more times just so it smooths it and you can see that that's given me quite a nice texture on the top of the gravestone right so what I'm going to do now is to is to fade this back down again because I want to create some grass in front of this when I paste it down. So if I take a plan view of this, I'm just going to draw a rectangle around the edge of this as a boundary. And I'm going to select to fade relief. Let's do it around about 50 again. I'm going to this time select both of the points because I, I don't need to zoom in on this. So let's select there and there. Select that as my boundary and I'm going to select create. Now if I rotate around, I'm going to select that again and maybe once more you can see that that's dropped that down. So it's going from full height on the left hand side down to almost nothing there. So let's delete my vectors, turn off the zero plane 
and there you can see my first gravestone. So open up the relief clip art library, drag that relief in there and I'm going to rename that to gravestone01. Okay, so for the next gravestone what I'm going to do is create some text on here. So let's switch back to the 2D view just so you can see this. I'm going to turn on preview relief, just drop the contrast down and I'm going to select to create text. Now this will look in my Windows fonts folder for any fonts that I have installed within there and it will show it up within ArtCam. So here you can see all of my fonts that I have installed within my Windows fonts folder and they're all available within ArtCam. So I'm going to use this Byington font here. Let's change it to let's say 20 millimeters high and I'm going to type in RIP. Now you can see that it's quite close together here so I'm just going to adjust the spacing. Let's say like so. Select done. And I'm just going to move this up. Let's say to around about there. Now if I switch back to the 3D view, you can see the text within the 3D view. If I double click on that text, create a beveled edge and select add, you can see that it's added the text onto the top of this. Now I don't want this, I want it to be carved into the material. So let's undo that and instead of clicking add I'm going to select subtract and that's going to take the material out. So there you can see it's carved that into the material. Now you can see that this is quite crisp at the moment. I don't really want it to look like that. I want it to look quite weathered. So what I'm going to do is use one of the sculpting tools available to Arkham Insignia, which is the Smooth tool. And as you can see, the brush here is really, really large. So I'm just going to drop that down. Let's say to around about there. Let's bring the strength down also so it's not too strong and I'm just going to go over this RIP just so it doesn't look so crisp so if I just go over this locally you can see that I'm just taking off the edges of this like so, maybe take off that edge completely these edges here just so it just looks as though it's a bit old. Okay, so that looks fine. I'm going to leave it at that. And what I'm going to do now is create a crack running through the middle of this gravestone. So I'm going to do that by creating a polyline. Let's say like so. And what I'm going to do is to offset this to create a ridge. So I'm going to offset this both sides and delete the original vectors. Now, if I zoom in on this, and I'm not going to enter a size for this. What I'm going to do is just wait for this cursor to change. And then I can grab the line and just move that. And then create an offset which is joined together. I can then double click on this and again subtract a beveled edge from that. Let's just select all of the text and delete that. So if you take a look at this you can see that it's created this crack. Now it doesn't really look realistic at the moment. That's because it's too sharp. So what I need to do is to smooth this out. So if I just start smoothing this in various places so I want it to be deep in some places and then smooth in other places so shallow in different places let's maybe bring the strength up and the radius so you can see that I'm adjusting this all the way along here and you can see that that looks 
a lot more realistic. Now another way that you could do this is to close the smoothing tool and use the erase tool instead. And what I'm going to do is bring the strength of this right the way down and also the radius of the tool right the way down. And then I'm just going to basically just do this freehand coming off the cracks. So you can see I'm creating my own cracks here. Like so now they'll be a lot more deeper at the top because there's more material there. So let's just say that that's okay. And what I can do then is to close the erase tool, open the smoothing back up, and then just start smoothing these ones also. So these will look a lot more realistic once they're smoothed. So you can see that's going from nothing into a large crack. Now if you happen to do that, go over the edge, you can just select undo. We also have revert and snapshot here. So if I'm scared about going over the edge here, take a snapshot of that, accidentally go over the edge, and then select revert and it will go back to that snapshot and all of this is still controlled by the undo button so I can go back completely to the beginning using the undo tool so let's just smooth this out again and then you can see all of my cracks for this gravestone so I'm happy with that now. I'm going to send this to the Relief Clip Art Library also. And I'm going to rename that to Gravestone 02. And what I'm going to do now is to create quite a complex gravestone for the third one. And this is going to be the centerpiece of the actual scene. Now, if I turn on the zero plane, you can see that I don't have much room at the top here and I want to basically create some wings or add some wings from the relief clip art library but I know that I'm not going to have enough room at the top to place them I really need to move this piece down now within ArtCam Pro and Jewelsmith we have a really useful tool called the cookie cutter tool which basically allows you to free up the model and you can just move that around with Artcam Insignia, one way that you can do this is to reset the relief and then bring the relief clip art back into the model. And let's center that and then move that down. And then I can paste that down. So there you can see I've basically just moved the part down. Now the wings that I want to add are not in this folder, they're in a different folder from a third party and this is included within the ArtCam clip art library. You can see that I have four reliefs in here and I want to use this wing that I have here. So I'm going to drag that in and I'm going to rotate that around to about there and let's move that down. Let's say to around about there. And what I'm going to do with this is clip art can be used in the same way as vectors. So what I can do is mirror the vectors. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do it across the model. So there you can see that that's mirrored both of the vectors down. And I'm going to paste these down. So there you can see I've got these quite intricate wings on the top of the gravestone. What I'm going to do now is go back to the Halloween folder and here you can see a skull that was modelled by one of the guys in the art cam department and what I'm going to do is just bring the size of this down
Let's slide to a round about there. And I'm going to move this up to here. Now, you can see that's probably a little bit too large there, so let's make it a little bit smaller. Like so. Now, what you'll notice is that the actual skull is lying underneath the gravestone. So this is a little bit of a problem. And the way that I can get around this is to go to relief clip art paste options and I'm going to enter a star height. So basically this is going to add a flat onto this skull before when I paste this down. So if I go back, maybe change the Z range, let's try 15 and apply, and then select paste. So you can see that this has added this skull onto the top of the gravestone. Now what I'm going to do is just add a little bit more detail using this spider. Now this spider doesn't look amazing, but I'm going to make this so small that it doesn't really matter. So let's bring that down, let's say about 20 millimeters, and I'm going to move that to the left hand side of the RIP, and let's go to the paste options. Now if I were to select merge high, I'm just going to change the Z range to 1. Now because this is 1 millimeter, it's lying underneath the gravestone. So if I go to the paste combine mode, if I were to merge high and paste this down, it would not show anything because it would be lying underneath. So what I need to do is select add, so it adds it onto the top of the gravestone. And select paste. So there you can see it's added this spider. And what I'm going to do is just sculpt a spider web coming from the top here. So if I just bring that down quickly, let's say like so, and then I'm going to smooth that off. So let's just smooth that off so it doesn't look so pronounced. Like so. And there you can see my finished gravestone. So I'm going to grab that relief, send that to the relief clip art library, and then I'm going to rename that gravestone 03. Right, this is now all of my parts completed. What I can do now is start assembling my seed. So if I reset that relief layer, the first thing that I'm going to bring in is the haunted house. And let's change the size of this. Let's try, let's say about 120. And I'm going to change the height to seven millimeters. And let's move that to around about there. And I'm just going to paste that down. I'm going to do the same with the large gra gravestone that I created. Let's move that to around about there. And I'm just going to paste this straight down. I'm not going to change any of the sizes for that. So you can see that this is at the front here. Now what I'm going to do is grab a tree line. This is already included within the clip art library. I believe it's in the greenery folder, but I've just placed it here for convenience. And I'm going to resize this, let's say about 200 millimeters. Let's change, let's move this around here, let's say like so. Now, the great thing about the floating clip art is that you can actually see how, how it interacts with the underlying relief before you actually paste this down. So here I can see that these trees are too high and they're going to be poking through these wings of the gravestone. So what I'm going to do is drop that down, let's say two millimeters and apply. Now you can see it's just poking through just a touch. I'm not too bothered about that. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to create a mirror of this. So let's mirror that across the model and I'm going to move that, let's say, over to there like so. Maybe create another copy of this here. And let's transform just that one 
and let's change the Z range of that, let's say 0 0.75 and apply. So it's just sitting at the back here. I'm going to select all of these and transform them and I'm going to make sure that I've got the combine mode set to merge high and then select paste. So there you can see that it's placed all of the trees behind the house and behind the gravestone. Right, what I'm going to do now is to bring in a few of the gravestones. So let's bring in the gravestone number two. And there you can see it's quite large at the moment. So what I'm going to do is resize this. And let's just lock that there. Let's bring this down to about 10 millimeters. So I want this one to be really, really small. Let's say like so. Change the Z range, let's do this 1.5 millimeters. And I'm just going to move this over to around about here. Maybe change the angle of that, like so. And then I can just paste that down. I'm going to do the same with the first gravestone. And I'm going to bring the size of that down to, let's say, about 50 millimeters. And I'm going to Change the Z range to 3mm, maybe tilt that one around just a touch as well. And then I'm going to paste that one down. I'm now going to bring in a pumpkin. So there you can see my pumpkin which is really really large. So let's bring that down. Let's say around about, let's say there, 35mm. I'm going to place that on the right hand side of this gravestone. Now if I rotate around you can see that that's really really high at the moment. So I'm going to bring the height down to 3mm, select apply. So that looks okay but the gravestone is actually poking through the pumpkin. So what I'm going to do is add a start height to this. So let's add let's say 2mm and paste. So you can see that that's added 2mm flat and then added the clip art onto the top of that. So it's lying at the front now. Now what I'm going to do is bring in some grass just to place around these gravestones and the house. So let's bring in grass 1. Now you can see that this is really really large at the moment. So let's bring that down to let's say about 25mm. And I'm going to change the Z range, let's say to 2 millimeters. But let's just see what it actually looks like first of all. So you can see that this is sticking through there. You can see it's quite high at the moment. So let's bring that down to about 2 millimeters. And what I'm going to do with this is place that there. And I'm going to create lots and lots of copies of this. Now I can do that by just pressing Control on the keyboard. So you can see, creating lots of copies here. And if I wanted to do multiple ones of these, just select multiple pieces of clip art and then create lots of copies doing that. Okay, let's maybe put one or two more there. When I'm happy with that, select all of these and I can paste them down. <coughs> Now that looks okay at the moment, but what I want to do is do some sculpting on this because I want to, I want it to look a bit more natural. So what I can do is erase. So let's erase these. Let's maybe not have that so harsh. Let's bring the smoothness right up, and the strength. Let's bring it about there. And what I want to do is just erase some of this so it looks as though this gravestone is on. A hill like so maybe erase a little bit of this grass here just so it looks like there's all different heights and just different textures in there so you can really get into this you can use the sculpting tools quite artistically If I just zoom out, 
you can see that that looks quite quite good so I'm going to leave that there I'm going to bring in some more grass to place at the front of this front gravestone let's make this a little bit smaller also so let's bring this down to let's say around about 45 let's place that here create a couple of copies now you can see that with this one it's just sticking through the pumpkin so let's just change the Z range of that particular one and it will stay behind the pumpkin so when I'm happy with that paste that down and then I can erase this also just so it looks a bit more realistic let's change the brush size for this and I'm just going to go around here like so and then I can close the erase tool now if I zoom out and just turn off the relief clip art library you can see my finished piece all of this created with ArtCam Insignia so you can see that you can do some really complex modeling within ArtCam Insignia so that brings an end to the demonstration I hope that you found it useful and thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.